Hi everybody and welcome to lesson 9 of the Igneous Petrology series. In this lesson I'm going to be talking about ternary peritectic phase diagrams. So just as a reminder about what a peritectic point is, it's an invariant point in a phase diagram where the reaction between a solid and a liquid will produce a second solid phase. So in other words, as that liquid reacts with a solid, the solid will deteriorate and a second solid phase will be produced. If we take a look at an example here, we have between forsterite and northite and silica as a crystobolite and enstatite between forsterite and silica on that bottom margin. We have our binary eutectic points at the side, just as we did in the previous lesson. So here's the binary eutectic between a northite and silica and then another between forsterite and a northite. Here we have our ternary eutectic point. If you're not sure what happens here, please review the previous lesson. So here is our ternary eutectic between a northite, enstatite and silica. And then here we have our peritectic point between forsterite, enstatite and a northite. So what's useful at the start of these diagrams is if we draw these lines between the peritectic phase here, which is enstatite in this case, it's here, and a northite. So I've drawn one line between there and a northite, and then I've drawn another line between enstatite and the peritectic point. And then I filled in those fields in the forsterite field. If we start somewhere in this forsterite field, it's going to control where our system ends up. So for example, if our system begins in the blue field, we're going to finish on the peritectic point because we're plotting to the left of this blue line here. If we start in the yellow field, we're going to hit the peritectic point, but we're going to then continue on and finish at the ternary eutectic point. And that's because it plots to the right of this line, but the left of this line. If we start in the green field, we're going to skip the peritectic point completely, and we're going to go straight to the ternary eutectic. I'm going to show you how this works in the following three examples. So if we start with a system in that blue field, we draw our line to show that it is to the left of that line. We then draw our line through the system and through the end member. So we know that our system is going to evolve towards that cotectic between forsterite and a northite via this line, crystallizing purely forsterite. Okay. The system is going to hit that cotectic line and we're going to start to crystallize both forsterite and a northite. Our system will then proceed to evolve and will eventually hit that peritectic point. If you remember, at that peritectic point, we're going to undergo a discontinuous reaction of solid plus liquid equals enstatite. In this example, that reaction will be olivine plus liquid equals enstatite. That reaction will continue until one of the reactants has been entirely exhausted, so either olivine or liquid. Because we started in that blue field, liquid is going to be exhausted before olivine. So we'll crystallize the enstatite at the expense of olivine, but the liquid will be exhausted. So we'll end up with a system of forsterite, a northite, and enstatite. No silica will become crystallized in this example. So let's take a look at an example if we start in that yellow field. So we draw the lines to show that we're sitting in that yellow field and we draw a line between our end member and our current system and our system is going to crystallize purely forsterite until it hits the cotectic line between forsterite and enstatite. At which point we're going to crystallize forsterite and enstatite in harmony until we hit that peritectic point. So now we're at that peritectic point. Just as before, we're going to undergo that discontinuous reaction of olivine plus liquid equals enstatite. Because we started in that yellow field, we're going to run out of olivine before we run out of liquid in that discontinuous reaction. So what that means is that all the olivine will be consumed and that liquid will then proceed to evolve downward towards the ternary eutectic point. So now we've hit our ternary eutectic point, we're going to stay here till all the liquid has been crystallized at an assemblage where it's sitting in the ternary diagram of enstatite, anorthite, and cristobalite. What's really interesting about this example is that we start with forsterite, but the final rock that we produce has no forsterite in it. Another example, let's take a look at what would happen if our system starts in that green field. So we draw the lines to show it's sitting in that green field. And just as before, we draw a line between the end member and the current system, and our system will evolve towards the cotectic between forsterite and enstatite. These two phases are going to crystallize in harmony, but before we do that, I'm going to draw a line between enstatite and the initial system. So if we look at this green line here, so our initial system sat here at the intersection between the orange and green lines, but now we have an intersection between the forsterite enstatite cotectic and that green line we've just drawn. 
So what's happened is that our system is going to evolve down that cotectic, but once it hits where the cotectic and the green line intersect, it's going to go follow the green line and then towards the ternary eutectic, bypassing the peritectic point up here. So let's take a look. We're going to evolve. We're going to hit that intersection. We're going to skip the peritectic point, and we're going to evolve towards the ternary eutectic point, where just as before, it's going to stay here till all the liquid is crystallized. We have no discontinuous reactions in this particular example. What about these other scenarios? So here we have a blue, orange, yellow, green, purple, and red system, each with their lines drawn for ease at the start to show you where they intersect. So perhaps you can pause this video and you can think about where these systems are going to end up as they crystallize. And I'm going to go through each of them now. So the blue example, hit the cotectic, evolve. I'm going to stop at the peritectic. Orange, through the peritectic, finish at the ternary eutectic. Yellow is going to finish at that ternary eutectic. Green, in a similar way, is going to finish at that ternary eutectic. Purple, also at the ternary eutectic via the Christobolite divariant field. And Forsterite is going to end at that peritectic as well. So I hope you found this introduction to peritectic phase diagrams useful. You can stay in the loop by clicking subscribe. Thank you for listening.